I never asked to be squad leader, but I had no choice. I now have 13 soldiers under my command. 13 men depending on me to make the right decisions and not get them killed. 13 on me to bring their loved ones home. 13. 13 is not a lucky number. Stand up! Hook up! Check your equipment! Remember, this squad sticks together! Once you hit the ground, find Baker and he'll lead us! Sound off! 14 okay! 13 okay! 12 okay! God damn it! Orion's hit! I'm fine! I'm okay! Jesus Christ, we're getting burned here! We gotta jump, Sarge! We wait for the green light! Battalions, from the German word Ost or East, were troops drafted into German service from prisoners captured from the Soviet Army. Most of these soldiers were from Asian Russia, North Africa, Russia, Ukraine, the Muslim republics of the Soviet Union, and other places the Germans had conquered. The Ost Battalions in Normandy area on D-Day were from the 709th and 243rd Static Divisions. The quality of these troops was so low that the German Army had no chance to implement a defense in depth and fixed these men to fight from prepared positions that guarded the beaches. The German strategy was to use the Ost Battalions to defend from fixed positions and German NCOs were ordered to shoot their own men if they tried to run away. The primary mission of the 101st Airborne was to support the landing of the U.S. 4th Infantry Division at Utah Beach. At 6.30 a.m., the American 4th Infantry Division landed on Utah Beach. The 4th Infantry Division linked up with the 101st Paratroopers early on D-Day and quickly moved inland. In Brothers in Arms, the squad ambushes the Germans streaming away from Utah Beach along Exit 4. 
Today, a monument exists at Exit 4 to commemorate the landing of the Allied forces, which included the free French soldiers who participated in the liberation of their country. The primary mission of the 101st Air... This is the U.S. M1 Garand rifle. General Patton called the M1 rifle the greatest battle implement ever devised. The M1 Garand was the standard weapon of the U.S. infantry soldier in World War II. The M1 is semi-automatic. It is a gas-operated, self-loading, shoulder-fired weapon. The ammunition is held in a clip of eight 30 caliber cartridges. In the hands of a well-trained soldier, the M1 Garand could fire as fast as the trigger could be pulled until all eight rounds were expended. The M1 Garand provides your fire team and brothers in arms with accurate, long-range firepower.
This is the US M1 Thompson submachine gun. The Thompson submachine gun was the weapon of choice of the paratroopers of D-Day. The Thompson weighs 12.5 pounds when fully loaded and is 33 inches long. The Thompson fires between 600 and 700 rounds per minute. Paratroopers would load their Thompson with either a 20 round or 30 round magazine. In Brothers in Arms, the 45 caliber Thompson is absolutely deadly in the hands of a trained paratrooper in close combat. Use this weapon for the close assault. This The German infantry was the mainstay of the German army. These soldiers were very dependable and much better trained, equipped, and disciplined than the Ost Battalion troops. The infantry was organized into nine-man rifle squads, comprised of a sergeant, a five-man rifle element, and a three-man light machine gun team. In 1944, the German squad and its tactics revolved around the MG-42 machine gun. In the 101st Airborne Invasion Area, the regular infantry were predominantly from the German 91st Infantry Division. The German infantry was the mainstay of the German Army. These soldiers were very dependable and much better trained, equipped, and disciplined than the Ost Battalion troops. The infantry was organized into nine-man rifle squads, comprised of a sergeant, a five-man rifle element, and a three-man light machine gun team. In 1944, the German squad and its tactics revolved around the MG-42 machine gun.
This is the British-made Horsa glider. Gliders like this one were essential to reinforce the paratroopers on D-Day. The Horsa glider could carry 30 fully armed troops or equipment such as a jeep, a howitzer, or anti-tank guns. The Horsa was a high-wing glider with a fabric-covered wooden structure and fixed tricycle landing gear. It had a wingspan of 88 feet and a length of 67 feet. Towed by a C-47 transport aircraft, the Horsa was let loose over the target and glided down to land in the open fields of France. In Brothers in Arms, you will see Horsa gliders land in the chapter titled Rommel's Asparagus. This is the Brit This is the U.S. M5 Stewart light tank. Tanks like this landed in the first wave at Utah Beach and linked up with the paratroopers of the 101st Airborne during the D-Day invasion. Among the American tanks, the M5 had the least armor and the smallest gun. It was used primarily for reconnaissance, scouting missions, and light infantry support. The Stuart tank was armed with a 37mm main cannon, which was used against fixed positions and lightly armored vehicles, a 30 caliber machine gun mounted coaxially with the main gun, which could be aimed with the turret at enemy infantry a 30 caliber bow machine gun, which could be used for suppression of enemy positions, and a turret-mounted 30 caliber machine gun, which could be used by an infantryman riding on the back deck, just like Sergeant Baker can do in Brothers in Arms. This is the U.S. M5 Stewart.
I'm a paratrooper. They call me the Colonel. I'm temporarily assigned to Fox Company, 502nd Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne, the Screaming Eagles, as an observer for the Allied Commander, General Eisenhower. It's my job to report back to Ike when all this is over. We jumped into Normandy three days ago, just after midnight on June 6th. Our mission was to support the beach landings, cause as much chaos as possible, and stop the Germans from driving the invasion forces back into the English Channel. Since then, it's been a hell of a fight just to stay alive. Right now, the battle is here, at the Norman town of Carentan. Our mission is to capture Carentan before the 13th of June. The Krauts are going to do their damnedest to stop us. The odds are that a few of us won't survive this, let alone eight days. Before we left England, General Eisenhower told us that he expected full victory and nothing else. So that's exactly what we're going to do. The folks back home and everyone in the free world is depending on us. Okay, soldier, saddle up. We have a war to win. This is the German Mauser K98 rifle. The Karabiner 1898 Kurtz, as it was called in the German Army, was the backbone of the German infantry and probably the best bolt action rifle ever made. The K98 rifle weighs 8 pounds 9 ounces and is 43.6 inches long. It has an internal box magazine that holds five rounds of 8mm Mauser ammunition. The rounds are fed into the internal magazine either individually or with the use of a handy stripper clip. In the hands of a well-trained marksman, this rifle could hit targets beyond 400 yards. In Brothers in Arms, you will often fight several teams of enemy soldiers armed with K-98s protecting an MG-42 machine gun, the center of a German infantry squad. This is the German...
This is the German Stummgeschütz, four, commonly called the Stug. Turretless assault guns like this were used to support German infantry units to knock out machine gun position and Allied tanks. The Stug was armed with a high-velocity 75mm cannon mounted in a cast mantlet. The 75mm cannon could easily penetrate Allied light tanks. The Stug's disadvantages are that it has no turret and the vehicle must move to face the target for the main gun to fire. In Brothers in Arms, you can use this information to your advantage when you attack the Stug with an anti-tank weapon or an Allied tank. This is the German Stummgeschütz for The Sherman tank. Tanks like this landed in the first wave at Omaha Beach and linked up with the paratroopers of the 101st Airborne near Carentan. The Sherman tank was armed with a 75 millimeter cannon, which was used most effectively against the sides or rear of enemy tanks. The Sherman tank. The German parachute infantry, or Fallschirmjägers, were the best equipped and most highly motivated light infantry in the German army. The German 6th Parachute Regiment and the 3rd Parachute Division fought in the Normandy battles. These German paratroopers, like their American counterparts, were all volunteers. They had more modern rifles and a higher allocation of machine guns, anti-tank weapons, and mortars than regular infantry. The Fallschirmjägers proved highly effective in the defensive actions they fought against American infantrymen in Normandy and were fierce opponents. The German parachute infantry, or Fallschirmjägers, were the best equipped and most highly motivated light infantry in the German army.
This is the German MP40 submachine gun. The MP40 was the standard German submachine gun of World War II and was the preferred weapon for squad leaders in the German army. The MP40 is 32.75 inches long with the folding metal stock extended and it weighs 8.7 pounds. The MP40 was a very lethal weapon at close range. Many Americans preferred the MP40 over their own submachine guns and scavenge them whenever possible. In Brothers in Arms, you can feel free to take one for yourself. This is the German MP...
We're going to show you the E3 demo of Brothers in Arms. My name is Randy Pitchford, and I am the president of Gearbox Software. Hello, my name is Colonel John Antel, U.S. Army retired, and I'm the uh, chief of staff of Gearbox, also the historian and military advisor. So my job is to make sure that the game is authentic as possible, as realistic as possible, and as much an experience of World War II paratrooper combat as you can possibly make. Right, and my job is to make sure that the game is really, really fun. All right, here we go. You really get to know a man if you have to watch him die. The moment right before he realizes it's over. That moment that his face reflects every decision he's ever made. And that split second you know what kind of life he led. And if he regrets it. All right, look at this. This is Normandy in 1944. This is what it actually looked like. Check it out. You can actually go here today in Normandy, France, to this very spot, and you can look out over the city of Carentan. And it looks different. It's been 60 years, but a lot of it's still the same. That church, for example, is still there, and it looks exactly like that today. It's amazing. And this year is the 60th anniversary of D-Day, but if you go back there today and you look at this ground, you'll see that a lot of it hasn't changed. And the Gearbox team has spent a tremendous amount of time and energy to make this terrain and this battlefield the most authentic experience you'll find anywhere. Yeah, uh, I like to joke that if you memorize the game, you could go to Normandy and become a tour guide. <laughs> look at this guy. Sarge, check this out. I picked up a BAR over at that crashed glider. That's Private Zanovich. He has a Browning automatic rifle. That's a light machine gun that's going to be very important to your tactics of fire and movement. Let me show you somebody else that's that's important. This guy, Lieutenant Colonel Cole. He, he's a real guy. Look him up on Lieutenant Colonel Cole. This man's a hero. He's one of two men in the entire 101st Airborne in all of World War II that earned the, the highest honor, the, the Congressional Medal of Honor. And and uh, the other guy that earned that award in the 101st Airborne was also uh, was also in this unit. Right, Baker, this is how it's gotta be. You and your boys have to stop the crowds from breaking through our line. You've gotta hold. No withdrawal. No one stops firing. If you run out of ammo, fix bayonets. Just don't let the Germans break through. Fight to the last, or the crowds will flank us, and it's over. Okay, I'm gonna do that, but first I wanna show you the assault team. Look at these guys. As we've said, Brothers in Arms is based on a true story, and these soldiers are true to life. Hey Sarge, how's it going? This is Corporal Corian. Corian's your assault team leader. He has a Thompson submachine gun. He uses that machine gun, which is very good for rapid fire at close ranges to close with and destroy the enemy. Look at him. Look at his eyes. Look at his face. It's almost creepy. You okay, Sarge? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We spent a lot of time uh, to try to create real people because as a squad leader, I make decisions that will affect their lives and their death. And, and th those need to be important decisions. See, I've got my fire team over there and my assault team over there, and I, I'm their leader. I'm going to, to lead them. But first, you can see I've got a rifle in my hand, right? It's, it's an action game. It's a first-person shooter, and I can fire this weapon by pulling the right trigger. Or with the mouse and keyboard, I press the left mouse button. I can also switch to another weapon, Thompson submachine gun. I can fire this weapon. I can switch between these two weapons, and I can swap them out for any weapon on the battlefield. It's it's kind of like, and, and it's as easy to play. But I can do something in Brothers in Arms that I that I cannot do in. I can lead my men. I can command them, and I do that very easily with the left trigger. I just hold the left trigger or the right right mouse button on the PC, and and this appears. And this icon is a one-button context-sensitive command system, and it allows me to lead my men. If I put it on the ground, my order is move to that position. If I put it on an enemy, my order is to attack the enemy, and I could lead my assault team and my fire team using this system. So I'm going to order my fire team, represented by that horizontal line, to move up. My fire team can fire on and suppress the enemy, to pin the enemy down with suppressive fire. That's why they're called the fire team. Move! 
And the other team that I have is an assault team. It's represented with an arrow. My assault team is great for maneuvering on the enemy, for getting up close and killing the enemy, assaulting them. Fire and maneuver tactics are about suppression and assault. So my uh, assault team is very important as well. Now these are authentic World War II tactics. The concept was to find the enemy, to fix him, to flank him, and then to finish him. Or as General Patton from World War II said, grab him by the nose and kick him in the ass. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Yep, use my assault team to kick him in the ass. Look at my men finding cover and, and uh, using it. Okay, contact. Contact, German. Look at my men. They automatically engage. They automatically return fire. They have battle drills that they practice, standard operating procedures. That man's going to find a better firing position because he was out in the field there when it started. And then cover each other as what some reload, the others fire and suppress the enemy. See that icon there? That's a suppression icon. It, it, it can be toggled off. You can turn that off in the game, but it tells uh, it tells me what state of mind the enemy's in. Look, this guy's exposing himself. Got him. Got him. Good shot. Thank you. All right, let me show you something really cool. This is called situational awareness view, and it lets me get an idea of what's going on in the battle, so that I can uh, I can make decisions about how to approach this problem tactically. See these guys here, they're terrified. They're hiding behind cover, they don't want to die. But they're going to try to use fire and maneuver tactics against me. This guy is, is going to lean around the corner and try to return fire. He's in a tough position right now because I've got six men, seven men including me, all pinning him down. So they're suppressed. So I need to fire and maneuver. Now the reason we give you situational awareness view is because we needed to give you some information about the terrain. You see, when the soldiers uh, prepared to go into battle, they had aerial reconnaissance images and, and maps and uh, sand tables, and they knew the battlefield. They memorized the stuff and, and rehearsed their fights, and so they knew the terrain before going in. You're not going to memorize all that stuff, so we give you situational awareness view. And it, it's, it's pretty amazing. We, we uh, went to the National Archives and got these photos out. You see this wall here? I was actually there. I've seen it in the aerial reconnaissance photos. And in this crossroads, it's exactly how it was. To the yard, it's been recreated. Our, uh, our guys have walked this area. And uh, last time they were there, they met a, a French civilian, 70 years old. He was 10 when this battle took place. And he, and he lived nearby and in a farmhouse, and he witnessed this fight that, that is taking place right now in the game. It's, it's almost like a time machine. Anyway, I'm going to fire and maneuver on these guys. I'm going to go over to the left there, to the crossroads, take my assault team with me, and we're going to flank them from the left, and we're going to get them. Uh, I'm going to leave my fire team here to suppress them, and I'm going to take my assault team with me, Sergeant Matt Baker. My assault team is going to go to the left, and we're going to flank and destroy this enemy. Here we go. Move! Alright, we're gonna move along this wall to the front group and step on that. Notice how simple all that was. Randy doesn't have to tell the soldiers to move do everything. Out! They're fighting on their own. Machine gun! MG42! Contact. Get him. Good shot. Good shot. You flanked him. Oh, wait a minute. There's contacts over here. I got a problem. Fire! Oh shoot, some music. Looks like there's a machine gun up in that, uh, up in that house there. Hold on, let me check the right flank over here because I think uh, I think I'm gonna have to get out of here and go back to that right. If I go out in the open and that machine gun opens up on us, it's gonna kill us. Yeah, the Germans have shifted their their defense, so you need to move to the right. Let's see if we can try to flank them the other way. Let's see if I can get these guys. You need to brute force this or flank them. Can't flank them left now. Too much open ground. Got Good shot. Oh, good yeah, job. successful flank. Good job. Here comes some more. You know, I'm going to have to abandon this flank and go the other way. That machine gun's opening up. Yep. Okay. Those guys spotted me now. I'm going to pull back and move to the right. Because that machine gun's going to tear us out. Assault team, come with me. I issued the fall-in command. Okay, they're moving tactically like soldiers do. Yeah. Covering each other. 
Germans in cover where they find it. My base of fire team is still suppressing that enemy, putting him down. Look, the Germans are maneuvering too. See that? They're using fire and maneuver tactics as well. I shifted to the right, so they're shifting to the right. We have a system we call situational AI, and it allows our designers to give the enemies commands in the same way that I'm giving the allies commands. It's neat stuff, go, and it go, allows go. The, uh, the enemies to use fire and maneuver tactics against, against the player and his teams. All right, so this guy's dead. We're going to cross the road here. Okay, okay it's a danger. Be careful. I know, but we got to get across if we're going to flank him from the right. Move better out. than flank him from the left. Yeah, the machine, machine gun can't this. get you from here, so you're All probably right. better off. Look, they cover each other. Go, go. Ooh. Ooh. Obrisky got Damn it. Damn it! Obrisky's down! Yeah. He's hit! Okay, uh, that man was Medic. killed because I crossed a danger area, kill zone, without properly suppressing the enemy first. But I've got a great flank on these guys now. Okay, now use the flank to your advantage. Fire. Take him down. Watch him taking fire. Look, he's trying to get cover from him. So oh, somebody's shooting you to the right. Grenade, I will take care of him. He's trying to get Two. out of there. Got him. Good shot. Thank you. Look, he's checking on his buddy over there. He's dead, Sarge. All right. Obreski didn't make it. He cares about his teammates, so uh, he went and checked on him. I'm going to bring my assault team move up, out. my fire team up, and we're going to make a move, move. on this house. I'm going to end this. Oh, you gotta love the Army Air Corps. 100 pound bombs. Look at that. Ooh. Okay, I'm knocked on my, off my feet. I'm not dead. Simulate concussion with motion blur and desaturation. I'm okay. Yeah, and sometimes friendly fire is too close and not very friendly. <laughs> oh, John. Alright, I'm gonna make a move on this house. Bring my assault team up here to uh, cover me. Go! 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 Assault right here. Get this guy. Reloading. Get him, get him, get him. Good shot. Not a good time to get reload. Get up against that wall already, you're gonna get killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. okay, they're dead. I'm gonna bring up an assault team. Give him some cover fire or grenades or something. Um, these guys are pinned right now. Grenade okay. in them. Uh, grenade. Fire in the hole. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so grenade. I need oh, you alive. Get him, get him. Oh, oh, good, good, good. Oh, that Notice that German tried to run away from the grenade, but then he saw you and tried to shoot. That is brutal. I love it. All right. Take out that uh, gun. I could totally snipe him right here. Do it. No, I'm going to I'm gonna tell my assault team to go get him. Give him hell! Always take the easy shot. <laughs> I want to see what happens. Oh, I heard okay, him. close combat. They're in the assault. Ooh. I think they oh, got him. got my guy. Oh, damn. Oh, got both of them. Told you to take the easy shot. Um, that was stupid. I was just curious about what happened there. All right. Tough going up a set of stairs. I know, I know. Let me get my fire team up here. And, Move uh, out! Let's see. Karen Tan is under naval bombardment, looks like. Yeah, well, your fire team's still full strength. Who's shooting on Karen Tan right now, John? Right now you've got the uh, USS Texas firing 16-inch uh, naval shells there on the... Uh, on a town of uh, Carantan. Look at that. That's awesome out there. This looks like they got an AA gun over there. And other, other naval ships. Oh, oh I'm coming. Counterattack. I'm going to get on this machine gun right now. Okay, those guys are suppressed. Oh, more contacts. Got him. We got him on the roof. Good that, job. That guy gave the hand signal. Like the fire team okay, leader. take these guys down on the right. They got him. Oh. Okay, German oh, tanks. You don't have any four. tank weapons. Get hands out of there. Put four. some fire on that tank while you withdraw your squad. Hold on, let me get my guys out of here. Put some fire on the tank while you withdraw your squad. Oh shoot! Give them some cover fire. They're getting taken down. Oh god! Take them down. Oh man. Oh, tanks are tough. Yeah, and two tanks are tougher. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that is our uh, new game, uh, Brothers in Arms, and we're very proud of it. We think it's uh, a very unique, authentic, and fun experience. And uh, we hope that you enjoy it as much as we enjoy making it. Thank you, John. I'll do better next time. Tua. Tua.
The Waffen SS Panzer Grenadiers were some of Germany's toughest soldiers and could be counted on to have more equipment, ammunition, anti tank weapons, and overall firepower than any other infantry force in the German army. The Panzer Grenadiers, which stands for Mechanized Infantry, were heavy infantry designed to fight in and around their armored half tracks. Their purpose was to support and enable the fast moving tanks and to keep the tank attack rolling along. The Germans believed in the concept of combined arms, using infantry, tanks, artillery, and aircraft together to overmatch the enemy in mobility and firepower. The wa This is the German Panzer IV, or Panzerkampfwagen IV, as the Germans called them. The Panzer IV was the workhorse of the German tank corps. Tanks like this were used by the Germans in the counterattack on Carentan to destroy American tanks and to support the German infantry assault. The Panzer IV had a high velocity 75 mm cannon, which can penetrate the Sherman's armor at long range. The Panzer IV had thicker frontal armor than the American M4 Sherman tank, so it was best to attack the Panzer IV in the rear or on the sides. Stay away from the Panzer IVs unless you have both tanks and infantry to attack them. This is. Just a rookie trooper and he surely shook with fright. He checked all his equipment and made sure his pack was tight. He has to sit and listen to those awful engines roar. You ain't gonna jump no more. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Is everybody happy? Cried the sergeant looking up. Our hero feebly answered yes, and then they stood him up. He leaped into the icy blast, a static line unhooked, and he ain't gonna jump no more. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. And he ain't gonna jump no more. He counted loud, he counted long, he waited for the shock. He felt the wind, he felt the cloud, he felt the awful drop. He jerked his horn, his hook spilled out and wrapped around his legs. And he ain't gonna jump no more. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. And he ain't gonna jump no more. The risers wrapped around his neck, connectors cracked his bone. The lines were snarled and tied and knots around his skinny bones. The canopy became a shroud, he hurtled to the ground. And he ain't gonna jump no more. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. And he ain't gonna jump no more. 
The days he lived and loved and left kept running through his mind. He thought about the girl back home, the one he left behind. He thought about the medics and he wondered what they'd find. And he ain't gonna jump no more. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. And he ain't gonna jump no more. The ambulance was on the spot. The jeeps were running wild. The medics jumped and left with glee, roll up their sleeves and smiled. For it had been a week or more since last the shoot had failed. And he ain't gonna jump no more. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. And he ain't gonna jump no more. There was blood upon the risers. There were brains upon the chute. Intestines were a dangle from his paratroop pursuit. He was a mess. They picked him up and poured him from his boots. And he ain't gonna jump no more. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. Gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. And he ain't gonna jump no more. This is the U.S. 30 caliber M1903 Springfield rifle. The M1903 series rifles were originally issued to American soldiers during World War I, but the, the M1903 rifle is a manually operated, rotating bolt, internal magazine fed rifle. The Springfield has an overall length of 43.5 inches and weighs 9 pounds. The M1903A4 was specifically modified for use as a sniper rifle with the addition of an M73 telescope. In Brothers in Arms, there will be situations where you will want to arm yourself with a Springfield sniper rifle. This is the U.S. 30 caliber M1903 Springfield rifle. The M1903 series rifles were originally issued to American soldiers during World War I, but the rifles saw service in World War II, the Korean War, and even the Vietnam War as a sniper rifle.
Baker! Baker, you okay? I think he's coming too. He's fine. Get him on his feet. God damn it! Fox 2, can you hear me? Can you fucking hear me? Fox 2, this is Fox 3. Answer me, damn it. Sarge, I can't get anyone. Langer, keep trying. We need armor now. We're all dead. Hello? Hello? Shit, is anyone there? I need armor support now. I mean, right fucking now. Keep shooting, keep shooting. Don't let him break through. Don't die! Hang in there! Dang it! Where's that goddamn armor? He's gonna die! He needs help! We're all gonna die if you don't get on that fucking radio! No! God damn it! Fuck this crap, bastard! Oh shit! I got armor! Let's get the hell out of here! No one's all back! Keep firing! Don't stop firing! Get down! This is gonna be bad! On June 13, 1944, the 101st Airborne Division held the vital town of Carentan, but just barely. To defend Carentan, the paratroopers needed to secure the high ground to the west. The German attack to recapture Carentan drove to within 500 yards of the edge of the town. The 2nd Battalion, 502nd Parachute Infantry, moved down to the 506 Parachute Infantry's right flank and helped to regain some of the lost ground. But the attack threatened the junction of the Utah and Omaha beachheads so seriously that the Americans decided to send tanks to repel the German counterattack. At 10.30 a.m., elements of Combat Command A, 2nd Armored Division, which had fought their way from Omaha Beach, arrived in Carentan. The coordinated efforts of the tanks, the infantry, and the artillery threw the Germans back and saved Carentan. This moment is recreated in the final climactic battle in Brothers in Arms. My name is Randy Pitchford. I'm the president of Gearbox Software and director of Brothers in Arms. I'm Mike Newman. I'm the writer on Brothers in Arms. So we're going to show you a deleted scene. This is uh, from a scene called Nine Days Earlier. It was chapter two in the game, and we cut it a few months before the end of production uh, for a lot of different reasons, which we'll talk about. This is actually a really rough cut for me because I actually envisioned this really awesome little scene where he'd introduce all the characters, but we ran into innumerable problems while trying to get this in in, in pacing and acting Sorry, and just a bunch of stuff. The the guy up on the, the cot there, that's 
Uh, that's George Risner. He's actually the tank commander that you link up with at Veerville. And, and there's a backstory between him and Baker. And, and we do a lot of exposition with the backstory of him and Baker and, and some other things. Uh, that We ended up cutting a lot of that, that exposition and, and a lot of that backstory out of the game. A, a lot of it involved just just Baker and Risner being kind of like high school friends and chums and and involving Baker's dad dying and leaving this this one relic to him, this pistol that Risner somehow got. Um, the objective was that this pistol would kind of pass around to people and it's like the death pistol they die. So it starts out with Risner having it before he eats it at uh, Dead Man's Corner. Yeah, everyone in, in an earlier version of the game, everyone who, who got this pistol would die, but it was really a symbol of this relationship between Baker and his father, and it helped Baker understand the transition between um, a soldier's Look, initial duty to his country and really the, what, what, he, what he arcs to, okay. which is the, about That's the brotherhood the between soldiers and the commitment is to the man next man to him. Baker? Um, when, when Baker's father left, uh, you, he, Baker, Baker, as a child, didn't understand that commitment. What I mean is, You'll notice one of the problems we walked into right here is that we've been standing in this tent for about a minute and a half and nothing's actually happened yet. The you. player just bought this game. He really wants Please. to do something and, no, wait, you got to watch this guy hold a pistol in front of you. You can't fire it. Just look at it. It's... It didn't work right. <laughs> well, yeah, we found that players really were interested in uh, less about our characters at this point and more in understanding what the game's going to be. So um, you already went through the the first few missions of the game, and you, you remember what that's like. Um, imagine if, if this sequence and, and what you're about to see was, was in there as well before you got to play the action sequences. We're, we're passing the two-minute mark, and maybe we're going to be let out of the tent. Here. No, Mac's going to talk to me. Country. Not quite out yet. <laughs> Baker, get outside this is more out like, uh, this was totally unneeded. Mac basically like, all right, Baker, we're going to win, and uh, it's just a little too much a little too much hua here, I think. We we had a lot of uh, hua um, in the game that... that you know, it was, we felt important hand about hand at the beginning because, play? you know, the, so these soldiers we always felt were better than us. It's actually Muza on the left there. Uh, he was a character who was supposed to be the 13th of the squad and die on the plane, and this was going to be his introduction. Well, now he's pretty much not in the game because this was cut. So there he is. There's Muza, the 13th What's squad member. <laughs> Oh, this is this was actually really interesting and another sad cut, but we got a voice actor and tried to get him to imitate uh, Eisenhower, very famous photograph from World War II. Eisenhower sounded way too much like Paul Harvey, and this just did not work. <laughs> yeah, imagine, you know, Hart Sox responding. He says, are you scared, son? And yeah. Hart Sox says, no, sir. Look uh, at me, son. It just uh, it actually happened. There's a famous photograph of him at Greenham Common and a lot of stories about that, and we wanted to recreate it. This is this is also kind of painful. A little Zanovich and Obi here. They didn't get a whole lot in the end of the game, and this is their little interchange about what are the odds we're going to die. And I, I thought it was pretty funny. but Knowing what you know now about what happens to Obreski um, in the church tower, it makes this more interesting. But, you know, it, it, was, it was all exposition again, and we're not playing. Yet. Yeah. So we're just walking around looking at guys and hearing them talk to each other. This is another good one, a little tidbit for everybody playing. Hartsock does have a daughter, so this is what this little interchange is about. Uh, he's, he's scared he's never going to see his daughter again. Uh, There's also a way to throw out the player and make everybody think he was going to die. but that was, that was Cole in the tent there, there was a little Easter egg. There's McCreary right there. Guy looks like he's 14. Uh, another little Easter egg, here's uh, Johnny Revis. You might remember him from the Penny Arcade stuff. He's the one that drew all that, so there you go. Revis, you probably also watched Die Very Quickly in yeah. <laughs> Purple Heart Lane. He went out with honor. I, I don't know why I laugh at that. It's so weird, you know, to tell <laughs> these characters that we care about, and, they, and you know, these the guys chapel? died like the I real soldiers did in a lot of cases, horrifically. And somehow there's still humor in this grisly outcomes. Speaking of, of humor, this is actually one of the best scenes in the sequence. No, My favorite in the sequence, definitely. It's, it's Alan describing how he got a VD from a waitress broad again. downtown in England. So He's a little mad, we'll say. <laughs> It's it's Fucking interesting. I, I to Mike's credit, I think the, uh, the it plays out much better on paper than it did with, with these actors. But um, I thought this is a really witty piece of dialogue, and I actually miss seeing this go too. This is actually an interesting lesson we learned uh, when you record chronologically. The first stuff you do, they're not going to be in their characters much. So this being what we recorded chronologically first, and being the game chronologically first, made it easier to cut because nothing happens, and the dialogue was the weakest. So. I think if we were to direct this game again, we'd probably the record the scene last and record it with all of the actors in the booth together, uh, which was hard to do logistically. Anyway, this is the uh, deleted scene nine days earlier. Hope you enjoyed it.